You're listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Hey friends, Dan Duvall here to tell you about something I am super excited about. The Bride Tribe Advance 2023, which we are going to be calling Revolution. Take your place in the kingdom. This is going to happen at the Royal Sinesta in Houston, in the Galleria area from November 9th through the 12th. At booking.bridemovement.com, you will be able to register for this event. And it links right from bridemovement.com. I know I don't always give announcements on this podcast for what's going on in the bride ministries world, but this is just too important, friends. It is going to be extraordinary. Every year that we do this advance, it is a move of God. It is a move of God. Last year, we had three hours of nonstop testimony after the event with a line that was still going and we just had to shut it down so we could tear it down. It was because God moves at these advances. And we don't want those of you that are part of our podcast family to miss out because you just didn't get the news booking.bridemovement.com. You can sign up. You will be able to get your hotel room. You'll also be able to get some information about the event itself, meet our speakers. It's going to be me, Todd Edwards, and also two of my favorite people from the other side of the world, Todd and Rachel Weatherly. And we are going to be uh, having an, an extraordinary time of family and fellowship, worship, and cutting edge revelation. So, I want to invite you all, booking.bridemovement.com. Now, in addition to that, Keep in mind, dandevall.com is the home of the Discovering Truth podcast. You can do a couple of things on that website. Number one, you can access our podcasts. Number two, you can purchase really cool merchandise like mugs and shirts. And uh, we have the whole Names of God series. A lot of people that watch church, they say, hey, where'd you get that really cool shirt with all the names of God? Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Gabor. Like, where is that sold? Dandeval.com, friends. And we it, it comes in robes for the ladies and handbags and all that cool stuff. And uh, you, you can know that um, you are supporting this podcast when you buy and look highly fashionable in your new gear. We also have the uh, ability to become a podcast patron for as little as $5 a month. And that comes with benefits. You get early access to these podcasts and uh, a few other goodies. And so The last piece of news, as many of you know, Overcomer Accelerated is our offering to those that want to accelerate their healing journey. You can join in three ways. One, you can join just for the live components, which includes a live ministry demonstration with yours truly on a weekly basis, as well as book study. Uh, Option number two includes over 100 hours of coursework online in, in addition to the live component. And and the third way to join is with a coach. So you'll get the live ministry and and, and the book study. You'll get uh, over a hundred hours of learning online. And you will also get eight hours of personalized one-on-one coaching with a trained coach every month that you stay enrolled. And so overcomeraccelerated.com. Check out the offer. And with that said, we're going to jump right into the podcast on the other side. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Those were your announcements. Well, friends, we're back on Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall, and I have Celeste Solom back with me today. Day. She was on with me just a few weeks ago, and we were talking about synthetic biology and a whole lot of stuff that they are doing. I mean, I was actually having a lot of fun during that conversation. And she was answering questions I've had over the years and trying to figure out like, how the heck did nanotechnology end up in the water, among other things. But uh, she is just a, a treasure trove of research and, 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 and well-researched ideas and knowledge and Uh, We're going to be doing a part two today, but we are going to take the direction of weaponry 
weaponry with which they are targeting individuals. Celeste, welcome back to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. It's great to be here, Dan. It's great to have you. Uh, 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 and and, and uh, for the people, why don't you go ahead and just tell them a little bit about your website, your resources, and how people can connect with you. Okay, so my videos are at celestialreport.com. And my articles of which has been kind of few, few because I've been doing the webinar on synthetic biology is uh, at shepherdsheart.life. And you can get all those resources now um, for sale. The web books or, or the flip books are up. Uh, the PDFs are up. Um, the paperback will soon be coming. And then also you can follow me on Rumble or whatever. But I really support, I really enjoy and appreciate everybody's support because what I do and what you do takes a lot of time. And um, I, this synthetic biology took me six months of immersing myself in it doing nothing else, like almost 20 hours a day. So um, it it was, and then I felt that the Holy Spirit told me that I really needed to make it free for humanity because um, this is, everyone is facing it. And so they, I mean, I'm, I'm the servant or the handmaiden of the living God. And so, I mean, you just have to do that. And, but I do, I have to pay bills just like everybody else. So now that we got that part over, over with. So yes, there's weaponry that is out there. And I think the first thing that kind of a, like a seg segue mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. it from last time with the synthetic biology is if you remember synthetic biology, that the, what it does is it changes your function from your original creation and plan that God had for you into a serving or bowing to um, the, the evil satanic forces. So theology, they're literally inserting it into you. And we, you know, people say, oh, look at COVID's here, or, or look at this here, Campbell's soup, Ch Campbell's si chicken noodle soup just went synthetic biology. It's now on the label. So, you know, the very symbol, now that's an algorithm, and we can talk about that in a few minutes. Um, that's an algorithm. It uses Carver plus shock. And why they chose, I mean, they're, it's do, they're doing it to all food, but, you know, chicken noodle soup was when you were sick, when you were young, your mother would make you chicken noodle soup as to, sure. for healing, for healing. And even your doctors often would say chicken noodle soup for healing. And now they've turned it, now they're, now it's a weapon if you buy Campbell's chicken noodle soup and probably so any other brand. So, 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 okay, <laughs> since you opened it up, I okay. Campbell's chicken noodle soup. Okay, so that chicken that's in it, what is it really? Well, these days, <laughs> um, now back in the last decade, the United Nations and really the you know people like Bill Gates and everything, they wanted to take it into synthetic biology and and you started to hear the words from about 2008 on onward that you can't take anything from nature to especially for food but you really can't take anything from nature anything at all and if you really want to see a excellent um people thought i was kidding on this but there's a video it's very short. It's like five minutes. On It's on YouTube. It's put out by The Onion. And it's the Taco Bell CEO. And it was talking about a time when they were introducing, it was supposed to be a um, satire or a like a, yeah, satire kind of thing. But what they were doing is floating the bubble. And they were saying they're going to melt down all the plastic uh, lids and forks and put it in the new chalupa and then their new taco was going to take out co2 from the atmosphere now what are we seeing now that's exactly what's happening and so i knew it at the time i knew it at the time and so they were just getting you 
you know, predictive programming, predictive programming. So you can look look at it yourself. And, and now we're here. We don't have to wonder about it anymore. So basically all food, anything that you have to need to live cannot come from nature anymore. It has to all come from the demonic uh, where it's broken down to the elemental form and then re-engineered devoid of God and his plan and his creation. So that's where we're at. Just, just disgusting. It, it, you know, uh, I have my own beef to pick, if that <laughs> pun intended, <laughs> right, with good. Taco Bell. Because <laughs> that stuff, you know, it, I, I took a few rounds like years ago. I'm talking like over a decade ago. I got delivered. I got delivered. And, and it was through much pain and tribulation. Every time I went to Taco Bell, it was gut issues, like up the wazoo. Ooh. I just... You know, and I learned. I was like, mm -hmm. this cannot be real food. No, it was not, not real food. I, no, <laughs> it's no. just awful. But that's okay. So that's my 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 opinion. Um, thank you. Wow, Campbell's soup. Okay, so so we're gonna talk about weapons. Now they're targeting people, right? And and I work with targeted individuals, right? And mm -hmm. so uh, I have had the most bizarre things explained to me by people and and all over the world and 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 we're not just talking about people that are disenfranchised okay we're mm -hmm. talking about people that have access money wealth yes like people are suffering and and they're they are being targeted by actual weapons yes. um a lot of them are frequency weapons mm -hmm. um of course there are other types as well and and so, 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 so let's talk a little bit about this now. Now, how do you end up from synthetic bio going into this direction, Celeste? Okay, so I went to uh, I go to military conferences <laughs> in my spare time. So um, this one on where they were talking about Havana syndrome, and at the very end, there was um, a CEO of a, a, a contractor, government contractor. And he was talking about the next pandemic that was going to come. And he said, you know, what people really trip up on is they see, okay, pandemic here, synthetic biology here, direct energy weapon here, um, 5G over here. But you can't look at it. This is called siloed. If mm. you just focus on this or this or this, and no, I'm not making any devil signs or anything, anybody. <laughs> yes. um, <clears throat> that you're, it's a silo approach in your brain. What you have to start thinking is these are an integrated weapon system. We have to, so the computers work with synthetic biology, which work with pharmacia, the pharmaceuticals and therapeutics which work with 5G and direct energy weapons. So we really can't look at them as separate things because then we miss it and we really can't understand it and we can't protect ourselves against it. If you don't, if you just, if you just look at one thing, uh, there's going to be many other things that hit you that you're unaware of. But when you understand this concept that it's an integrated weapon system, Think of it as a Roman phalanx in the, you know, at the, in the Roman days, what they did is they had their shields overlapping one another and they kind of had it like a spear and they would go forward and it was very effective warfare on, you know, body armor and they would protect themselves so that it was overlapped. So there weren't any gaps. And what we're looking at when we're doing a integrated weapon system is we're not allowing the enemy any room or gaps to sneak in and get us a different way. Wow. Yeah. 5G uh, frequency weapon. So, so um, when you look at this, Celeste, what is the context from which you're approaching the problem? As in you're analyzing, okay, there are these weapons. Um, and, and and so are you researching this simply to expose it at this stage or to bring about actualization of change, to put together some kind of case? 
where, where are you approaching the problem from? So where I'm approaching it is one, I need to understand the weapons because in the scripture it says no weapon formed against us will prosper. Come on. Um, so I want to understand. It also says, don't be ignorant of the devil's wiles. So I want to understand his battle strategy. Um, that's what you need to do. This is war. We have to realize this is not normal. We are at war. Um, there's spiritual war. There's war in the in the space above us. There's war under the earth and there's war on the surface of the earth. It's we're in a war position. And if you think that we're normal, you might want to have a little chat with God about that because we really are at war. You may not be on the front lines, but we are. you need to understand we're at war. The next thing that I, I do, once I understand the weaponry, I go to the, into the word because every problem and every solution is in the word. And if we don't go to the word, that is the rima of God. That's the sword of the spirit. That's how we're going to slay uh, these devils. And we're going to wound the head of the beast by his word. And so we can't, um, I don't come, I'm not trying to effectuate political change or any, I think it's at this point, it's an individual basis. And either you're with the Lord or you're not with the Lord, you know, <clears throat> not that we're not planting seeds and all of that, but in this war setting, um, I don't think we can't solve a, a spiritual issue with a political solution. So that's kind of, that doesn't mean we don't network like you and I are networking and others are networking. That doesn't mean that. It just means that <clears throat> I don't think that we're going to see, you know, we're not going to vote them out. Um, it, it, at work, they used to say the train has left the station. And that's true. Uh, the train has left the station. There's not other than Almighty God who could put it in. I mean, he he changed Nineveh. I mean, and he, but he took out well, Sodom and Gomorrah. So, yeah, yeah, he did. He and Nineveh was had a delayed judgment for a whole generation. The whole nation mm -hmm. got turned upside down. It's you know, I I I I, I think that our god is big yes and and one of the things that you're bringing out is okay so we're we're researching weapons technology weapons because there are prayer strategies to be developed that can oppose and i'm obviously 100 percent on board because i've been solving right for technologically driven harassment and bondage for years that's like because as I was, you know, getting into my whole work with survivors of satanic ritual abuse and government projects and defecting from different levels of the cult throughout the world and all of this stuff, we ran into the technology and we ran into the frequency and we, it just kept landing on my desk. And it, you know, it, it, it was hard because it's like, okay, well, let's just, you know, believe the promises of God and plead the blood of Jesus. And I go, okay, you know, it, it feels good to pray it. But then you map it. It's like, is this actually changing lives? And not always would simple prayers create change. Um, but, you know, one of the interesting things I realized, Celeste, is that there is a way to map technology to spiritual principles mm -hmm. that on the basis of the mapping of technology and its function to spiritual principles, you're able to bring in spiritually driven change to physiological or physical processes that are happening in the natural plane it's it, it it's wild it can and it, for me it kind of boils down to whatever you ask believing you receive it you will have it so if you don't know what to ask for or your prayers are you know quote unquote amiss which in this case sometimes it's like literally you don't know how to pray against the technology then there's limited fruit but there is power in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. to solve problems. I mean, on catastrophic levels. And so that's the hope, right? And, and that's what we've been, that's what I've been seeing. I've been seeing plenty of testimonies, even from technology stuff, but, you know, getting to that 
you know, place where we understand, okay, this technology is real. It's really happening. Uh, one of the big technology areas that deserves discussion is frequency technologies. Mm -hmm. You mentioned 5G. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's unpack that from your perspective. What, what has been brought to your desk, Celeste? So it, I like to look th at things from a positive side. So imagine, I just want you to, everyone to right now to think um, you are healthy in mind, spirit, and body. Every part of you is healthy the way God created you, you know, not that we don't all have a little ache and pain or something, you know, we, you know, we're human. Um, but you're at the grocery store, but the person in front of you, and God bless him, I was just at Costco yesterday, and I saw a man, and he was like ashen, and he had a oxygen, he had oxygen he was carrying with him. And I, and I, you don't even, frequency is so fascinating, because mm -hmm. You don't have to talk to the person. You don't have to smile at them. Of course, it does help. Uh, you don't have to shake their hand. <clears throat> but just your presence as a healthy person in mind, body, spirit kickstarts that person into health. Kickstarts. Now, that person can refuse. Maybe they like being sick. Maybe they like the attention. Maybe they like this or that maybe there's different bondages but your presence and we need to realize this when we're healthy as healthy human healthy mankind i'm trying to get rid of the human and out of my vocabulary um as healthy mankind that's a powerful statement that we can effectuate healing just our presence and and it does work it really does work. And it works both ways. I, one time I was in the grocery store and there was this little old lady, she's like four foot something. And she was looking at the loaves of bread up on the top shelf. And there was, I said, would you like me to get those two loaves? Cause she was trying her best, but she couldn't look at the labels or anything. This is back in the eighties. And uh, so I brought him back down and she could inspect him. And she goes, my name is Esther. And I, and I said, oh, my name is Celeste. And she goes, you know, Esther's in the Bible. I said, I know that. And, you know, we just had that brief exchange. She decided on the one type of bread that she wanted. This was the 80s. Mm -hmm. And we both went our separate ways. Every time I went into that grocery store, I looked for Esther. I never did see her again. But I know that just our brief interchange and we, you know, that particular day we would run in, into each other in different aisles at the grocery store and we just smiled at each other, you know, and I just think that is powerful. That is a frequency weapon, God's frequency rep weapon um, to help people heal, you know, and then you just add prayer and other different things. How amazing is that you know well okay so approaching frequency from that standpoint right okay this is this is huge so now first of all okay so you triggered me there is a passage in the book of revelation right chapters four and five where we are introduced to the throne room of god mm -hmm. and i tell people the throne room of god is a frequency extravaganza mm -hmm. light sound mm -hmm. frequency everywhere right and, and and it's so extraordinary because it's like frequency translating through all kinds of the even you know it's it, it, but first of all god himself is described on the throne as a living stone a lot of people miss mm -hmm. that like so mm -hmm. what passes through that that frequency that comes off of the stone like the whoa right and then there's this, the rainbow, all these colors, that's, those are frequencies of light surrounding, but it's like an emerald. And, and then you have like the choirs of heaven singing, holy, holy, which is more mm -hmm. frequency. And then you have the sapphire. So, which is like a, but it's described like a sea of glass. And, and, mm -hmm. and so the glory of the Lord is reflecting in and out of it. So it's like frequencies everywhere. And then the throne is talking and lightnings, thunderings, voices. 
And it's like, wow, 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 wow. They think like God is a massive frequency generator. Like his frequency is the source point of all of creation. Like so that that and then you know people even borrow on the name of God. It's like, well, that's the frequency that passes through the whole universe. Well, of course, God is a frequency, uh, 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 and as it is all of the different aspects of Him, like love and joy and peace, these these are like frequency. So when we are connected to the source, those frequencies pass right through us, change things, and it's interesting because you, you know, people know this intuitively. It's like you meet a person, and it's like, wow. It, it, it it's like there's nothing there they're, they're so shut down and you can't or the only thing coming off of them is fear and insecurity and anxiety but then you have, you know person b and they're just so connected to the heart of jesus and it's like this love and peace and joy just emanating they haven't well, you're right okay but you know so so we are frequency generators walking around mm -hmm. Um, and one of the things that, that, that is so true about what you're saying, right? Frequencies affect us. So when we hang out around people that have, that, you know what the new agers call these vibes, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> vibrations, of course they do. Like, you know, but when you hang out with people that have good vibrations, like, like it brings us up or down. So if the enemy wants to bring people down into corporate and a uh, 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 mass influence into negative thought patterns and disposition. He would want to target the frequencies throughout a region. And kind of what he also, what the enemy is doing <clears throat> since the Lord just ministers in all the frequencies through our senses and what the enemy is trying to do right now is dull our senses dull our eyes dull our ears dull our taste dull our smell dull our our touch and so that is one of the subtleties that you know the weaponry isn't exactly well, like COVID, they said, oh, well, you're not going to be able to smell and taste. And some people still can't smell or taste. Um, so, and some people have terrible tinnitus, which, you know, lots of vision problems and senses. And that kind of, it's very kind of hard. I, you know, I have my own vision uh, challenges um, that, but I'm trusting on the Lord. I was going to have surgery. And I was reading the passage in um, Exodus when God is calling Moses. And, and, and Moses is, this is the Celeste paraphrase. Moses is saying, oh, you better call somebody else. I'm slow as speech. You know, I'm not very, and I'm not a great orator. Maybe you better call somebody else. And, and you know, God's not going to let him off the hook, you know. And he goes, is it? said I who makes the tongue and makes speech and all this and then the next words and it was like lightning hit me because I was going to have surgery the next week he said isn't it I who gives sight and blindness and I went oh my god by me going and getting surgery going into the belly of the beast uh pharmacia what lessons am I depriving myself spiritually if I go for that surgery when I'm turning to them instead of falling on my knees and just crying out to God and saying, I'm going to hang on to your garment until you heal me, Lord. <laughs> I'm just going to do it. And then also, if I did, God forbid, go blind. It's not going to impact my faith, not one bit, but it might show and minister to somebody else that even though you have a physical affliction, Paul had a thorn in the flesh, you know, that through our trial and they see you still living for Jesus, that's a powerful statement. So I canceled the surgery and yeah, I mean, the Lord has not uh, healed my eyes yet, but hey, I, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't certainly slow me down at all. I'm still in full-time ministry. Um you know, you know, at the end of the day, my eyes get a little weary, um, but it doesn't slow me down. But I feel like I'm in the perfect will of the Lord. 
And so I think that's a le- one lesson. And you, each person here has different things that they can, because the Lord went on and he did a cu- number of things, which did relate to Jesus's ministry that he talked about from Isaiah, you know, setting the captives free and, you know. Well, I'm going to believe God for the complete healing of your eyes. So Absolutely. I one. do too. And But you know what? To me, as long as I have him here, I, I'll tell you a funny story. So I was doing something, um, writing books, writing articles, all this stuff. And people would get down on me because I missed a like a comma. I would put like a comma instead of a period or like one little grammatical error. <laughs> they did not realize that I, at that point, I could not see the screen. I could not see my computer screen at all. I literally was hearing from the Holy Spirit and I was merely the scribe. I was just typing away, typing away, typing away. And they had no idea. And I go, you know what? If that's the worst, if you're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater, it, 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 whatever, you know, but I've seen what the Lord can do in any state. And I'm content. I mean, content with my lot. Of course, I'm going to ask because it says if you don't ask, you're not you you may you may not receive. So of course I'm going to ask. But if it's not my lot, and it can minister to other people that I am a, a frail human being, just like all of you out there, you have your strong points and you have your weaknesses. But we still can do the will of Jesus Christ through it all, through it all. So so coming back to um frequency technology yep all right so now i am of the opinion that that certain frequency weapons mm-hmm. can be projected either onto a single individual mm-hmm. um basically by knowing the brainwave signature because mm-hmm. the brain has no firewall or over a population yeah. and with a population you would want to immerse them from a frequency generating tower that has the reach over Mm -hmm. a population like within a certain square mileage or whatever now um i think all the technology is in place and i think the 5g grid is uh particularly utilizable to this end but uh what are your thoughts you know, people make a lot of to do about the 5G mm-hmm. to me. So I was dealing um, with patients that had electromagnetic sensitivity when I was in environmental medicine. And think of it like pollution. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, think of you're in downtown Los Angeles or something uh, or Beijing. And, you know, you go about your business. Is it fun being in pollution? No. I, it might, might you have some respiratory or it irritates your eyes or whatever? So, yeah, but I think it's a low grade. It's a kind of like having a low grade infection. It undermines you. Yes. But it's to me, I think the bigger energy weapons that I'm really concerned about um, because they it it doesn't bring you to the primordial soup you know you're just kind of melting down into this blah of pollution but there's ones that just come after people and those are the ones that i guess i'm more concerned about i think that there's things that we can do against 5g you know we can not have we can make a safe room in our bedroom where we don't have electronics in there Um, We can paint the wall with, there's paint um, that you can get. It's copper paint. It's very expensive. It's like $5,000 a gallon. But if you get anti-fouling paint, that's F-O-U-L-I-N-G, it's what they paint the bottom of boats with. It's very inexpensive. So you can paint your walls with that. You can wear clothes that can protect you from EMF different waves 
I think the the bigger ones are kind of the these newer technologies. So I, I also know about the direct energy weapons and copper is your friend. Copper mesh, uh, get it on Amazon. Um, you can put it above wherever you're getting. If you're targeted in one particular place, like right here at this chair, I've been targeted. I've been targeted once or twice. And um or your bedroom, wherever you're targeted. Um, the people that were playing around with it that that at that military conference I was talking about said they put two inch square of copper mesh grounded. Has to be grounded, you guys are gonna end up having trouble um on their temples. And it didn't matter. They were shooting direct energy weapons at each other in the lab. And they said at the temple, it will prevent the head from getting um from getting zapped. Fascinating. Um, yeah. That's, I, I I actually do a, a really agree with what you're saying on um 5G. You know, uh because this is this is the those it's everywhere. And it I mean, okay. So I've talked to people who have felt highly targeted by 5G, that that's their mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, my personal experience is I'm around 5G grids all the time because I literally live in a city and my life for the most part goes on as normal, which to me says, like you said, it's more like background pollution. I'm just concerned with some of the technologies that they put on the, the towers themselves that I think can be utilized, which would be, I guess that would be my, I don't think they, the 5G and you could correct me if I'm wrong, because maybe I'm completely wrong on all the technology here, but it's like they have like these black boxes that are part of the technology on the 5G towers. And then they have like the 5G generator that just puts out the frequencies and something else that does whatever they want. Am I wrong about that? Just tell me. I, uh, I don't think the terrestrial stuff. Yeah, it's a network, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, it can do even direct energy weapon. I, to be honest, I'm more concerned about what's up there in space that they have, or even flying over like the Valkyrie, that autonomous jet. Did we talk about the Valkyrie last time? I can't Let's remember. Let's talk about it. We did not. Okay. So in 2019, Australia had wildfires. And so we, sent over an autonomous jet that means that there is no human in the in the seat and it was made of graphene it could go invisible it could not be invisible and it goes over there it has a payload like a fire payload like what in the heck are they sending a, a autonomous military fighter jet over to the australian wildfires but it also had geomancer and spellbook on it and what that did is it projected down across and it was called Valkyrie chooser of the slain and remdesivir in during the whole COVID that the original name of remdesivir was um, Valkyrie so they knew ahead of time that 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 was what it was going to do but so back to Australia uh, so it geomancer and spellbook projected down spells and curses on the people and the territory of Australia. That mixed with the indigenous people's different re reliefs and just created this huge witch's brew. And I was in contact with a, a person in Australia at the time. And he said the witch, the witch meetings and all this type of witchcraft was off the charts. And then what happened? That then bam, no sooner did the wildfires end then the uh, jet came back to the United States. And what did the Australian government do? It turned tyrannical. I mean, of, of all the countries, they were the most tyrannical against the people. They just went. So I, but to be honest, I really think it was the witchcraft. Um, there are some really good Christians who were praying against the witchcraft especially when they found out about Spellbook and Geomancer and Valkyrie. But now Valkyrie has come home to roost. The chickens have come home to roost. And so Valkyrie is over here. So, but we not only have Valkyrie, so which is this jet that comes over and broadcasts down on the people, individual. I mean, they can even target one cell or one organ in your body. 
they could do everybody that's a Christian, anybody that's this, or they can be all Italians, you know, they're, um, it can deter, determine race, religion, anything they want, sick, well, whatever. But we've got Ouija, Astarte. These are all DARPA things, very low orbiting satellites. They all have either their gods or goddesses or their names with witchcraft. And they all have Geomancer and Spellbook. And so they're constantly pummeling us now. And this just started last year. I mean, it's they were just, they're just beaming down witchcraft. And so to me, Yes, we've got to be concerned about the frequency, but witchcraft has that frequency too. And so we have to realize that we got to put, like I said, it's an integrated system. Mm -hmm. So the frequency is working with the witchcraft and we have to realize that in our prayer life and mm -hmm. come against it and realize that even though we may not be seeing it, it is being projected down upon us. Now, uh, it, you probably don't, know the answer to this question but you know I, I i'm going to ask it and maybe you have some opinions so they're sitting there in the darpa lab right mm. scientist a and scientist b like huh how should we spend our time today let's build a satellite to project witchcraft on people like oh sounds like a great idea you know so you drink a cup of joe and start working on it and then they they they, they spend millions and millions of dollars to launch it and put it there and then it just does that like so so what's the use case from their perspective like if if we were to be in the minds of the people that are sitting there at darpa putting this stuff up what are they thinking <laughs> when they're putting these technologies together i i i, I mean I, i'm just asking as <laughs> I'm genuinely curious, like, how do you, what do you think? Okay, so I'm probably suited to answer that question because before 9-11, I worked for FEMA and we used to brainstorm. I mean, we would, you know, get in the room, huddle, you know, and uh, talk about what projects and what's the best way of, of solving it, that type of thing. The closer it got to 9-11, certainly two years, the countdown started at two years before 9-11. And then afterwards, it was like downright forbidden. You stay in your office, you stay in your wheelhouse, and you don't go out. It's, um, what do they call it? Um, what do they call it? Compartmentalized. So those scientists there are told one little thing, you know, or they just give them money to play. But I think they're so compartmentalized that they really are not. And and honestly, when I was being trained for our incident commander, um, you're put in this artificial emergency operation center, and then they have this other room, and that's where the big that's the hive, and they're injecting like how the disaster's going, and they make it as miserable on you as possible to see if you're if you're made of the right stuff. And at the end, you know, I, I went out with one of my instructors after and um, and he said, you did too good. They don't want people to be thinkers. Mm. They don't want you to beat the system. They just want you to be a little worker bee. I'm just a little worker bee. I'm just doing my thing, you know whatever that is, you know, I'm told to do this. I'm told what to think. I'm told what to do. I check in at nine o'clock. I check out at five o'clock. I go, you know, they don't want people to put the big picture and connect dots because then they might, might become a whistleblower or something. Um, so they really don't want people thinking. So they don't, they have a very narrow scope. scope. It's like with binoculars, you can see, or a panoramic camera you can see everything but they just want you to see this like little microscope uh vision telescopic vision so does that answer your question okay so basically yep evil corrupt people doing evil corrupt things for a paycheck for a paycheck dollars back in wow okay oh. what else should we expect um <laughs> so uh, you 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 are primarily concerned about the low orbiting satellites, um, which makes 
a lot of sense. Now, um, but there's other things like looking glass and human to body, uh, body human body communication, um, mm -hmm. and the harvesting of our electrons, <laughs> literally. So there's this technology out there. You want to go down the rabbit hole a minute? Yeah. Okay. Electron so, harvesting technology. What? Yes. What so, is that? Well, I, I would. I so one night I just wanted to like chill, you know. So I I turn on and I won't watch anything offensive to my faith, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I I picked this um, about the Hope Diamond, a documentary on the Hope Diamond, and at the end they say what they're doing is they're doing shooting a laser at the hope diamond so microscopic that nobody can see the holes and they're liberating the electrons from it and i go because they wanted to see the origin because they they're going to try and tell us you know we came from aliens and you know primordial single cell you know it, there's no creation it's evolutionary but i go oh oh i didn't and then next thing I know, I find out about this technology that they are actually through electroporation. And I was actually talking with a doctor about this yesterday. Um, with these weapons there, you, you know, you've heard of the little needle thing technology no you haven't heard the, oh, well let's just talk oh, frequency so they're drilling little holes in your body right now yeah and little tiny lasers that you don't even see and it's mm -hmm. called and then they're uh, the some of your electrons get liberated and they're capturing them and they're cannibalizing them they're food for these evil people and not people demons they're actually like, like you're sitting there, I'm sitting there or here. I, I think we're pretty protected because of the blood of the lamb and mm -hmm, stuff. Mm -hmm. But the average person that's maybe not got their armor on and in active in prayer, they're literally boring little holes in them, liberating a little bits of who they are as a human. And these demons are eating it. They're cannibalizing it. And I went, and it's, I can give uh, you that. I can send you that information on that technology. It's you know, just like, wow. Now, here's what I was aware of it, it, in, 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 a, in a more general sense. You know, when people are in, 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 in strife mm -hmm. and, and anger and fear and depression, um, deep emotions like that are negative uh 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 absolutely this, this has been discerned by so many people over the course of you know decades like demons will come and just grab that emotive energy and they do feast on it it's 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 a power source for them um which is why one of the one of the one of the things that the enemy does when he creates massive fear that's a harvesting frenzy for the demonic. So like a pandemic where they put all this fear on CNN and CNBC and MSNBC and all like that, that this stuff is a freeding frenzy because it puts people in a frequency emotive state of fear and panic. Oof, the yum, 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 you know, um, what you're talking about seems to be like next level demonic harvesting of people. Wow. They don't stop, do they? You know, the, the good news is, though, is that God keeps filling us up. Yes. <laughs> like, you know, and that's one of the things that I, 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 there's a teaching in the body of Christ, you know, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And some people have taken this to be a one time event where they mm -hmm. begin to speak in the gift of tongues. And I mean, I speak in tongues. I'm all about it. Uh, one of the things I've noticed, though, is that as I go like day by day, week by week, I get fresh in fillings of Holy Ghost, like, you know, mm -hmm. fill me mm -hmm. up, Lord, <laughs> mm -hmm. fill it back up. I think one of the uh, mitigation strategies for this kind of stuff, just as people are listening is stay like, like we have an infinite power source in the spirit mm -hmm. of God. Like we can refill what's been stolen and harvested. And that's the good news, but this is uh, it's good. It, it's good to know. Wow. But just think like at a candlelight ceremony, uh, you know, you're doing a candlelight service <clears throat> And we've got that candle inside of us. We've got <clears throat> Jesus is the light of the world. 
And so just think of yourself as a candle. But just if you can't think of yourself as a candle, just think of holding a candle and it's it's got a flame. And then you're you lean it over and you are passing it to the next person. Now, when you pass that light to the next person, like I'm passing it to you right now, Dan, and I'm not diminishing my light, but I'm kindling your light. And and so you're not diminishing, you're actually igniting another person and it can go infinite. It can go exponential outward. And and in the Bible, do a word study sometime on the Lord's outstretched hand. So it goes outward like this, his light. Um, I guess I'm in a positive mood today. And I, it's hard to I talk about weaponry when you're all like fired up, you know, for the Lord. So. <laughs> um all right so 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 now here's a i'm just gonna ask this what are some of the other weapons you've been becoming um, aware of more recently like specifically well so you maybe you've already covered this with everyone i don't know we'll see so i'm just gonna read a few this is from um robert duncan I was going to say David, and I knew that wasn't right. Uh, uh, Global Communication Warfare, and its code name is Gabriel. Now, you got to know the enemy hates God, but he uses God's the language. But part of that is for deception. And this is under your voice of God weapons. Go under that. Biometric rec recognition recognition and identification network is the acronym is brain and that's biometrics is under that radio hypnotic intracerebral control electronic dissolution of memory is called edom that the acronym is edom mentally integrated neuron duplicator the acronym is mind Chatter bots, which that's the big, you know, chat GPT is the new thing. So artificial linguistic internet computer entity is called Alice, the acronym. Uh, thought and memory interface is Tammy. I got two more. Um, common human routines interference software technology, the acronym is Priced. So when they use the word Christ, especially if they don't say Jesus, um, you have to, they're on the enemy. Um, this is an interference software with root, human routines because they don't want you to be human. Remember in 2019, it was declared we're a post-human world. And then the last one I'll, uh, we can talk about is silent assassination through adaptation networks. That is the acronym is Satan. That includes death doctors, angels of death, psychic assassins, voodoo doll, no touch, torture, and day of the damned. Oh, I guess I. One last one is Noah's Ark, and the code that's code for downsizing the human race. So I read that book, Project Soul Catcher, Volume Two, years ago. It blew my mind. Um, yeah. it's now sits as suggested reading for all of the people that I train to do work with, um, survivors of government projects among other things. And, and, um, yeah, th th these, these kinds of technologies seem to really be almost like the harder part of the problem to solve than even the demonic is because, when 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 people are up against technology, it's kind of like, you know, it's one thing to pray and say, you know, Lord, I just want to believe you for a financial breakthrough, or I want to mm -hmm. believe you for um, a positive attitude at my job today, or I want to mm -hmm. believe. And then it's another thing entirely to, you know, look at your cell phone and say, I'm going to pray and this will no longer work because now your prayers are actually bridging the gap from spiritual matters into the physical realm. And there's, uh, you know, there's some complexity around, especially if it's going to work every time. Um, 
And some of these like uh, technologies that are affecting the human mind, physical function and all of that stuff, it, it, it does get extremely hectic. Now, one of the ones that were, was on that list, the chatterbox program, I've actually run into that. It's extremely irritating. Now, the way that it was manifesting when I ran into it in at least years ago, it's like a, it's like a, a, a talking program in a person's mm -hmm. head that just keeps mm -hmm. repeating a script, but it's not a piece of soul that's broken. It's not a demon. It's literally a program that was yes. uploaded into the brain that's speaking a script the person hears inside of their head. Highly irritating. And it's almost like, you know, this, the technique for dealing with this thing isn't to cast out a demon. It's actually to uninstall a program. Yeah. But you're talking yeah. about uninstalling a program from a biological entity, person, right? And so welcome to the new horizon, Celeste. Well, it's like if anybody has had a loved one or knows anybody that has had Alzheimer's or dementia, they get that script. They play something over and over again. And sometimes, I mean, we, we're all, we've all been there. We're in bed at night. We, we, we just want to go to sleep and there's something on our mind and it just keeps going. It's that script that you're talking about. Just keeps, it's like a little hamster wheel round and round and round it goes. And we just have to command it to stop in the name of Jesus. And and not let it don't live it let it get a foot in we just have to and there might be some kick to it like an energy it there might be something or it might just literally there are script weapons and there's dictionary and semantic weapons so these are all part of the weaponry but when we see it when we realize you know this is like the second time I've thought about that in the last five minutes and I'm trying to go to sleep. You know, it's time to really get serious, even if you have to, you know, sit up, read some scripture, pray, you know, however the Holy Spirit leads you to do it, um, to break that script. You, you need to, now, unfortunately, people with Alzheimer's and dementia don't have that, you know, option, but. But most of us do. Now, with some of these other technologies that you know he, he writes about in his book Project Soul Catcher, I, now I'm just curious: Have you been personally approached by somebody who was experiencing the targeting by these weapons, knew it, and was explaining to you their experience, and how did they explain it? And it, it just you know, for the listeners, on the uh, the like the Gabriel the script, or the, the Christ script. program or the so Satan. what what happens to what, what the emails that I get from targeted individuals is yes. very sad because usually it is a five to ten page email yeah and they're pouring their heart out to you yeah. and they're desperate they've been to five hundred doctors yep and nobody can help them yep they've talked to their pastor he can't help them Check. and they want somebody they're in desperation they will they're turning to somebody they don't even know they are so desperate and so sometimes i can help but oftentimes with the the um targeted individual i don't have the the my ministry isn't that specifically for targeted individuals. I, I can give them a few tips. Um, and of course I, sh I'm now sharing your books and I've got my own, some, some other books like uh, Dr. Ed Murphy's book. Um, but that's, this is where the body of Christ come can come together because I'm on the front lines. I'm researching. I'm, doing what the Lord has called me to do. And was I in the deliverance ministry? Absolutely. For 10 years. And, you know, of course I've never stopped really. 
Um, it's like you said, once you start, but I mean, actively, I had a season of 10 years where I was actually just on a deliverance team and we did deliverance. And so I will gently, um, if a few tips, but mostly that doesn't work because these are people that really need a, a big support network of, of faith, of people of faith around them. It's unwise to do it. Like for me, I don't have a church background or backing right now. I don't have like a, a deliverance team. Um, so it's unwise unless the, if the Holy Spirit said, act, you know, minister, like I did, did go on a trip east and I went to this lady's house and her daughter was about 21. She was um, some mild mental handicaps. And she saw in dream or she saw in dreams and visions, but she showed me pictures and it was evil. And then she goes, well, let me tell you about Pokemon. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit, died, you know, <laughs> it was the line of Judica in me coming out. And I said, no, let me tell you about Pokemon. Mm. And, and she goes, you mean I have to give up Pokemon? I did it gently, you know, she goes, I have to give up Pokemon uh, for Jesus. And I said, yes, you do. And she goes, but my mom said it was okay. And her mom's a pastor. And I said, yeah, you do. Because right now, Pokemon's trying to get you into the metaverse. Pokemon, there's a whole Pokemon metaverse now that um, I could send you the information on it. They don't want anybody left behind. I mean, it this documentation, it was downright scary. So I had just come into that information when I w went to her house. So yes, I did a mini deliverance session wow. with, with them. So, you know, um, yeah, that, 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 that is the conversation, right? Like targeted individuals. Yeah. They, uh, my heart is, it, it so goes out because the disenfranchisement is off the charts yeah because if it's not happening to me and it's happening to you and what's happening to you makes me feel powerless then i don't want to know or care about what's happening to you because i want my peace and 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 so targeted individuals often find themselves on the other side of this logic right where it's like yeah. i need help somebody listen yeah. to me and so many times the response is uh i don't understand your problems so stop talking about them and that that that, that that's very painful and 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 i've gotten the 5 to 10 to 20 page emails as well our organization gets them all the time in fact you know we we are always trying to iterate on how can we get better at being the, the help. Uh, but there are these reports, right, of it's it's like even being implanted with technology through frequency targeting type testimonies. And uh, then there's strange marks on the body. There's stuff that comes out of the body. The, the, there's often a tie-in to a Induction experiences, either the my labs or the entity. It's like it's like all these worlds begin to blur. And um, you know, it's very difficult to explain for a person, for instance, like yeah, I was in my bed and then I started getting blasted by frequencies, but then I was being pulled by a tractor beam through my wall, and then I was in another dimension, but on a craft, and then I was put back three seconds after I left. And my spouse slept through the whole thing. And it's like, but there's, there's like, how do I explain technology that seems to not obey the laws of linear time or normal experience patterns? And, and then there's, you know, the influence over emotion states that people experience, like, and, and talk about, they're like, you know, it's just, all of a sudden it's like drop of a hat. I'm overwhelmed with anger, emotion. And it's like a frequency just smashes me. Suddenly I'm depressed. Suddenly I really want to, you know, 
do things I shouldn't do, uh, uh, engage in addiction patterns. And it's like, but I'm getting hammered. And, you know, the temptation is, well, th that's just the fire arrows of the devil. That's just a spiritual thing. Just renounce it, move on. And yet some of these technologies that you even mentioned claim to have the capacity to sway emotion states or put the body in physical sensations that are quite overwhelming, including what they, what, what he was calling in his book, denial of service weapons, um, which really messed with my head because I was like, wow, you know, they suggest uh, that, that some of these denial of service weapons, like you can make a person feel physically like they are being lit on fire, yes. but no marks on the body. That's so, what happened with Iraq. Remember in the Iraq war, all the course. soldiers ran saying our skin is burning, our skin is burning. That was that weapon. And what is possible in an underground lab where there's no regulation, no laws, no police, no rescue, if you want to torture a person with these kinds of weapons. And I think about that sometimes because I think I've sat down with some of the people who these experiments have been executed on yeah. and are tracked. And yet, you know, I think about the heart of Jesus on all of this. And, and despite the, the, the reality of the problem, I see that this is what I believe. The Lord is trying to tell us, this is my provision for the problem. Mm -hmm. And I think each one of us is part of that provision. Mm. I think some of these people would not be in this state like humanity or mankind as a whole right now is getting squished like a bug because they want us annihilated, just like in the book of Esther for the Jewish people. So people are feeling it, whether they have experienced a sophisticated weapon or just this whole social, cultural agenda to annihilate man and woman and all biological life. I think it's incumbent on each one of us to listen. And many of these individuals just, I'm even finding this in just casual people, people that are not targeted individuals, but just suffering from this, you know, there used to be customer service. You could buy a product that would last more than two months and all these different things. I mean, my family won't talk to me. My, you know, there's all these dynamics that have been, especially since 2020. So just what did Jesus do? He listened. Yes, he taught, but he validated people. Sometimes you don't even have, here, I have a big shoulder and just talk. I will listen. I will break my, whatever I'm doing, I will sit down. I will listen to you. And sometimes for all of us, that's important to just be a listening ear and validate. The person just wants, yes, I'm going through something. And then it wouldn't build up. So what happens with the targeted individual is they keep getting hit and hit. And nobody's listening to them. They keep reaching out and there's like, wait, go, what do I do? And then it build, 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 build. And their cup overfills to the point that some even commit suicide because they feel that there is no, there's no way out and nobody will even give them the time of day. And I think as a believer, even if you don't do deliverance, facilitate another person not getting to the point that their cup is overfilled um, in a bad way. Thoughts? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I couldn't agree more, Celeste. Uh, we, that listening is the first step to getting to the right answer. One of the things I tell people a lot is I am less interested on it as an individual. The, the, and I believe this is the, the, the piece the Lord has given me. Mm -hmm. I am less interested than in being right than in getting to the right answer. And the only way to get to the right answer is to listen long enough to get new information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because if I had all the answers, then you know, uh, praise the Lord, job done, but I'm still here. Uh, then there's still a lot of problems to solve. Therefore, I need to learn. And I, therefore, 
we need to listen, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and that is one of the keys that, you know, we've had here at Bride is, I mean, I am listening. I'm trying to encourage other people to listen. Thank you, Celeste, for also listening. And hopefully those of you that are listening to this podcast, uh, that's some encouragement to start listening a little bit more as well. Now, I will say this. I mean, too, too much negativity is, is tough for anybody to handle. We, we do mm -hmm. have to uh, balance our intake of negativity with positivity. I get that. Um, but not at the expense of what the Lord is trying to do to for people. Like there has to be some bandwidth to be there, to, to, yeah. to literally be the hands and feet of Jesus to listen, even if we don't know what else to do. You know, one of the, that, and that's, that's powerful for some people is to be heard for the first time. Like you don't think I'm crazy and you're actually willing to listen to what I've been through that, that in and of itself is a deliverance. Wow. It's kind of like a foot washing. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, your listening is very much like a fit foot washing. We don't do foot washing because we wear shoes and we're not walking with sandals in the dirt. But your listening is ministering. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever had a foot rub but or a massage, but they're very nice. And so your listening is a massage to this person that has been tormented and tortured. And so I think that that is a blessing. You are imparting a blessing and you are emulating your savior, Jesus Christ, who did the same, you know, so, and he does it for me every day. And so why wouldn't I, because who did he reach out to? He reached out to the social outcasts, the most vulnerable in society. And so these are the most vulnerable in society these days. And when we spend time to just listen and validate and say, you know what, I might not have all the answers. But I'm listening and if I let's have a free discussion, but I want you to know I care and I'm I believe in you. Um, it can make all the difference for that targeted individual. And I always do respond. I may not always have the answer because I can't make the torture stop. But I do believe that greater is is he who is in me than is, than is in the world. Um, so I come from that framework, but, you know, I can't flip the switch off, you know, only, only my father in heaven and his son, Jesus Christ can do that. And the Holy Spirit can minister to the woundedness. So, so what do you think the convergence is between nanotechnology and frequency technologies, if any? It's a hand in hand. It's this integration, you know. So when you connect to a website, you're looking up something. You're looking up Celeste's website, and over on the left hand part of your your screen, down below, just above your tray, there's it says, "I'm doing a hand." Your computer's doing a handshake with that, with that <laughs> other website, and that's kind of you know you're kind of holding hands there, um, and that's what it's doing it it's it's connecting it's networking it's making a bond a tether oh that was the word tether oh they're big in the military circles that 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 was not in your book tether and yeah. that's when i mean they think that, that that there's a tether between saturn and jupiter and tethers in nanotechnology and so tethering and yoking and yes, one time I wrote the word wrong. I, I'm an organic farmer. What can I say? I put Y O L K, and somebody wrote. They said it's like yolk. Y O K E. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you can't take the organic farmer out of me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hear. I mean, I know what a yolk is. It's like the Jesus yolk is easy. And, but anyway. Um, so those are a couple of the words that um, they have their favorite words and their favorite technology, like cavitation is a big one. They, oh, they love cavitation because it can do, it enters your brain. It can enter any orifice. And um, we were kind of talking uh, a little, so then, so imagine you got a thing of seven up and you shake it 
and you take the lid off of it, and what happens? It goes squish, bubbles everywhere. So, um, and those bubbles go in, but they they love the ears, and so it goes in and it does damage damage your um ear. Um, I can't think of a technical name of it right now, but then it, the bubbles go into two different ways into your brain. Uh, through the cerebral fluid and also through your blood. And then it's those bubbles smash into your brain at such a velocity that it can cause like um, necrotic tissue. It can actually cause parts of your brain to die or it can cause a stroke or it can even seed Alzheimer's later on. <clears throat> but it does literally damage the stroke uh, your your ears so okay so that's the weapon so what do we counter it with so where are bubbles found in the scriptures they are bubbling up they're in pool they're they come up from springs if you've ever seen a spring it's bubbling up and um the spirit of the prophecy of jesus christ is our bubbles so to counter the the weapon bubbles we would use the bubbling of the prophecies of jesus christ and your favorite your favorite prophecies that minister to you because we're each unique so what your favorite prophecies are or maybe not my, my favorite prophecies so discover what your favorite prophecies are that will minister and and come against this uh cavitation event yeah speaking of the interactions with between planets you know that <laughs> i assume you're not a flat earther no i'm not but oh i get the flat earth people. <laughs> thank god <laughs> okay. don't you know what the firmament is <laughs> stick with the science list you know nothing <laughs> oh my god so um yeah the planets that that is uh su such a That is a huge subject. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting things is that there are ley lines between Earth yes. Yes. and all of the planets in this solar system. Mm -hmm. Not only are there ley lines, but I've been told about the gates yes. between the planets. And mm -hmm. there are places, typically, they've all been described to be deep inside the Earth. Uh, so how to get there, I have no idea. But like earth gates or underwater portals that will take the person that travels it from this planet mm -hmm. to another planet um somewhere either underwater or in some that it wouldn't be underground like we would maybe it is underground like but under saturn ground not earth ground like on that planet and or the moons of them it's so into so there's this it and 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 so there is this connection. There, there's interconnectedness, and I, I am definitely under the opinion that you know there are frequencies associated with stars, mm -hmm. constellations, mm -hmm. and and even planets that under certain uh, alignments have an influence. Um, and that gets into some of the higher levels of the uh, manipulation of of the creation that I think the occult world taps into. Probably a conversation for another day, but um, I could do a short conversation. Uh, you oh, do you have something to say about that? Yeah, I do. So yeah. um, when they were going to release the good old jab, um, they just like in the Book of Esther, this is very much modeling after the Book of Esther. Um, they consulted the astrologers for the propitious day of annihilation and they had to deploy it on november 2nd because there was a a, a specific alignment of planets and stars that would potentiate the effect of that of what they were doing let's just say that mm -hmm. so they had to do it on this particular day because just like in the book of Esther, you know, with the purposes of annihilation at hand. And um, so, yeah, they do con consult and they do believe in 
but we don't need to fear we don't need to fear i mean yeah they did it um on that day but just as in the book of esther the law reversed and the people were given the power and you are given the power in from your heavenly father from jesus christ and the holy spirit to overcome this and i think that your prayer books really demonstrate that i know they've been powerful in my life so thank you thank you for saying that. <laughs> i'm not I, i'm never going to tire of uh the <laughs> the commercials celestia too kind but it, you know it's if it's true i'm not it's not flattery it's it's truth and um if something works you know and it works for the positive let's broadcast it i mean we get plenty of the bad news yeah let's, let's share some of the good news but you know i have another thought and I'm, I'm just gonna say it here because this is something that i've been processing more recently now i i went to south africa and um, I got a prophetic word before I left. It's like, you know, when you go, the land is going to talk to you, Daniel. I was like, okay. You know, so I went and then I got this massive download on elementals. And um, I came back. So for 14 weeks, we were talking about elementals at the Bride Ministries Church. I mean, and and I, I thought these people would be tired and they wanted me to continue. Unfortunately, I'm moving on, but that's for another day. Now, now with that subject said, you know, elementals, earth, fire, air, water, sun, moon, stars, earthly elementals, heavenly elementals. One of the things that I am now, because I, I, I believe that this is something the Lord showed me. You know, the elemental kingdom has been heavily defiled because all of the witchcraft that is done pulls on the energies of the elemental kingdom. I mean, you have water witches, you have fire witches, you have earth witches, you have sky witches, you have, you know, the hermetic magic and their magic tables pulling on the elementals. You have, you know, uh, uh, the pentagram. And when you draw that on, well, what is it pulling on? It's pulling on earth, fire, air, water, and void or spirit like those are the five points right there this elemental magic with it with the with the seven pointed star it's <laughs> earth fire air water sun moon stars like the seven points there so you're merging earth elementals and heavenly elementals right and so everything's getting defiled with witchcraft like it's not just people doing bad things to each other and hurting each other it's like they're pulling the whole creation into the the defilement and then as they're defiling creation, like locally, like the earth in the, or the land itself, the air over the city or the community where they're doing lots of witchcraft, like the earth, the air gets defiled, the earth gets defiled, the waters get defiled. You know, they do water rituals all the time. All these cultures, even in Haiti, like I'm half Haitian, they, they, they have waterfalls where they just go under there and they just do voodoo rituals. Like that's mm -hmm. what they defile the water. And one of the things I, I I I had pointed out to me by the Lord is that God is on a redemptive agenda. It doesn't stop at mankind. It actually extends to the whole creation. Yep. And so 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 the book of Colossians says, "What all things, whether in heaven or on earth, are being reconciled in Christ by the cross." So it's like, wow, you know, this is really what Jesus did is bigger than we were told. And that's what excites me. It's like I I never cease to be blown away by the size of the of the of the love and sacrifice of Jesus. It's just so big, so huge, and it keeps expanding. The more you know Him, the more you realize I just didn't know how good you are. And then, and then we got to the subject, and and, and what I felt the Lord showed me was the elementals within a land, the earth, the fire, the air, the water, and then the way sun, moon, stars, planets, like these things interact is on God's redemptive agenda. Like mm -hmm. he wants to redeem the land. He wants to redeem the air. He wants to redeem the water, right? So this is the, the, all this nanotechnology frequency assaults you're describing. They're assaulting the elemental kingdoms as much as the human domain, right? It's just, everything right is trying to be defiled and i felt like what the lord was showing me was as the sons of god rise up and step into the administration of their identity and this would be on a level that we haven't fully explored 
um, in the past 2000 years. I think God is taking us into that bridal identity, um, that, mm -hmm. that mature state. I believe that part of the, the agenda is redeeming the elemental kingdoms, like pulling them. And what that means is pulling them into original estate. It's like, listen, earth, air, water, like you have an original estate. It's to submit to the kingdom of God. That's you were created to praise the Lord. And here's the funny thing, right? That might sound strange until we read Psalm 148, which says, praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heaven of heavens, you waters above the heavens. And, and then praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures in all the depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind, fulfilling his word. You couldn't get more clear in Psalm 148. Like God's redemptive agenda is this alignment of the elemental kingdoms under his government mm -hmm. and and what i felt like the lord was showing me celeste and you know I'm, obviously you can spin off of this i feel like as we minister our priesthood before god to each other and the creation and bring creation to a remembrance of their rights estate their first estate the frequencies that come off of the creation itself and the elemental kingdoms will smash this new world order technology I, I, I now that is, you know, a theory anyway, I, I find it to be hopeful. Well, we are at this very interesting period of time that I've talked about a few times that <clears throat> all the cycles of time starting in 2020, like billion year cycles, million year cycles, 100,000 year cycles, 25,000 year cycles, 12,000 year cycles, 6,000 year cycles, all the way down to 11 year cycles are all converging, all converging right now. Wow. And in 2020, we enter, so it takes 25,000 plus years for all the constellations to do their full circuit in the sky. And that happened in 2020 we switched into the age of aquarius which i mean being you know growing in the 60s i thought we were in the age of aquarius back then but i didn't study astrology mm -hmm. i i do the maza road but not the astrology of no in an age of water and we think Jesus is the living water. But we are at a flexure point where the most catastrophic disasters of all of Earth's history have happened. And we are also have entered the sixth extinction level event. All that to say, you're right. I What he is doing is he's going to judge. So in Ha'azenu, uh, which is Deuteronomy 32, um, earth heaven and earth are going to be called to testify because mankind basically didn't do what they were supposed to do and walking with their with the lord and so there's going to be a little period of judgment a very small period of judgment and then you're right i mean we can look as believers very hopeful that we are taking the first steps into eternity that bridal supper, marriage supper of the lamb is just around the corner. I'm not going to set dates. I don't know. It's the only our father in heaven that knows. Um, but it's close. We can know the season and we know it's close. The technology's there. Everything is lining up. I mean, you have to be an ostrich not to see it. But and what, you know, it's stressful. It's stressful for you. It's stressful for me. But what bride and groom don't go through a stressful time as they're getting ready for that wedding? It's a stress, that judgment period. Just think about getting ready for a wedding. I mean, there's the cake, there's the dress, there's the people, there's all the details of a wedding. And everybody's kind of crabby and they talk, what do they call the brides, bridezillas? <laughs> because they're like, you know, because we're supposed to be looking forward to that beautiful day. And we have to deal with all these little things. We have to get our garment white, and you know, not us, but, you know, we have to take care of the issues in our life, repent, be on our face. And 
and that's making our garment white for our our wedding day with uh our bridegroom and so i'm excited and to see the see the earth restored i'm not as quite as maybe you're very much more hopeful than i am i <laughs> think that this is one reason <laughs> that the needs to be a new heaven and our new earth that even with the purification and the war coming back um that it it there's some severe the earth and the everything took a severe hit and i i don't know maybe there's another reason for a new heaven and an earth and maybe we can discuss that another time i don't know maybe you have ideas i i uh, it, well, and I guess we we could probably end on this note. Uh, I do have some ideas about new heaven and new earth. Most of them were out of the box for me, um, and and it, the 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 way that my ideas about it came about was was conversational. Now, my my listening audience is going to understand where I'm coming from when I say this, but you know, I I. I stepped into a place in my walk with God where I realized essentially every realm has its own sentience and as as far as from a spiritual standpoint. So so every city is a realm, the earth is a realm, every planet is a realm, and um meaning a government or a kingdom, a Malkut and and they will have their own sentience, which means it is possible to actually, at, in in the spirit, engage in a conversation as a son of God. And um, I have had in prayer time, you know, with the Lord, uh, several conversations with with Shemaim or heavens, and 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 the downloads that I've gotten from that have been off the charts and uh one of the one of the interesting things from that um engagement and encounter was it it seems like the heavens and really the earth as well is excited about new new heavens new earth for from the perspective of what was explained to me it's it's more like a deliverance than anything else it's not like a death and ceasing of existence like the the perspective is this is my deliverance is i'm being delivered into new heavens and so it's like it's uh, creation is actually very excited about that and i don't know so am i <laughs> yeah so am i because Fighting. quite frankly the earth's been oppressed for a long time and there just is. And so I'm excited too. I mean, I can hardly wait for this. You can feel it in the air. You can feel the the energy and the excitement of, of it building towards this, our steps into eternity. And I'm just like, I'm so ready for it. I Because when I was younger, I did not, I mean, I understood what it meant to be an end-time believer because i always figured i would be in <laughs> Hineni, call me lord <laughs> yeah i'm always the one that puts up my hand you know so i i was pretty sure i'd be here <clears throat> and um but then it's i i, I just i just I'm, I'm at a loss for words what can i say I I was, it's it, which is hard for me because I'm a communicator, but <laughs> but when you look, at, I mean, when you just ponder what he's doing right now, so you have your version of the throne room. I like Isaiah six, mm. <laughs> um, with the train filling the temple and the seraphim, mm. and oh my goodness, I I just that's my favorite one. That of of heaven, the heavenly heights, and um, yeah, that's my favorite throne room vision. I mean, I like I like them all, but you know, we all have kind of our because there's stories, there's fact stories on that. Why I am have that one as a favorite. It's a beautiful passage. Yeah. 
It is beautiful. Um, did you have any other thoughts you wanted to leave us with today, Celeste? I just say, you know, listen um, to your fellow mankind, man and woman and child, children. Emulate your Savior. Be Walk in his footsteps. You'll never be sorry. Yes, you may go through a lot on this earth, but you'll never be sorry in the spiritual and this, you know, and it reaching out and validating people right now is a very easy thing to do. All you have to do is listen and spend a little bit of your time. And you've got all eternity. So why not? If you can minister to somebody in the name of Jesus Christ and be a blessing, I think this is a big thing that all of us, that each one of us can do um, to help our fellow mankind out, you know, in this, this hour. And who knows, you know, some of them that don't know Jesus Christ may accept him as their savior because you spent the time, you cared, you listen you wash their feet hmm. well friends uh, i've been talking with celeste solomon and, and you can find her at celestialreport.com this has been a, a wide-reaching interview um i enjoyed it thank you and thank you for all of the hard work that you've done to um put the pieces together friends until next time god bless and godspeed You've been listening to Discovering Truth with Dan Duvall. Visit me at dandevall.com where you'll discover merch, books, and the opportunity to engage in our private social network. Join the tribe by subscribing to our email list and supporting this podcast.